Welcome everybody to the Amramuro Discovery. Today's guest is Sharon Bahraini, a fellow Iranian uh, coach who has helped me through many uh, interesting times in my life. Today he's here to talk uh, with us about uh, the topic of serendipity in this very interesting time where we're trying to hold on dearly to anything that we can find control over. A financial background, telling people to trust in themselves and uh, seize the opportunities in the moment. If you're listening to this podcast, you care about change and you believe that dis disruption is imminent and there are ways we can get good at it and we can prepare for it. So let's start off with uh, Sharam. I heard your story uh, about you coming to Holland. It took you about a week to get from the border of Pakistan as a 17 year old to uh, finally getting arrested in Amsterdam while you were on your way to Toronto. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what you felt as you were basically suddenly on your own? You, I think at that moment, the fear is so big, you're not aware of what's going on. Mm. You know, it's as an animal, you have to react. It, uh, it was a reaction on what's happened. Mm. So at that moment, I was not aware of what was going on. I tried to survive. And when you survive, yeah, after all, you can't tell what's happened. But at that moment, it was only how do I make sure that I stay alive? Well, wow. and this staying alive was a real imminent threat because... Uh, Definitely. I heard you telling about that your convoy, the, the smuggler's convoy, yep. got, got raided yep. by another gang. Yeah. And they shot me and uh, they, uh, yeah, I saw the death. You no know? guns were involved. Yeah. yeah. And you guys had to, how did you deal with that in the moment? Panicking? No, I was not at all panicking. Wow. I was thinking of... You know, when you are sitting in the barber shop, you have you you do not have to move, because <laughs> if so something's happening, you should stay where you are. That's the best uh, thing that you can do. I was quite uh, no, not panicking. After after Matt, after that, I feel the panic. How how did that take place? Because then you can think, oh, it can happen this or it can happen that. But at the moment that's happened, I was quite. Uh, now, it was not a relax, but I was very uh, calm. Calm. Well, um, so you you managed to get into Holland. You had a very nice family uh, take you into their home. Yeah. You spent about a year uh, getting on your feet, going to school. Yeah. You grew up in Amsterdam, followed studies, and yeah. you told me about you have a lot of luck in your life. Yeah. So you, you managed to survive the yeah. convoy yeah. from Pakistan to, to Amsterdam. Yeah. You managed to find people who would take care of you in Holland. Yeah. And then you had your first job at a McDonald's yeah. and made it to management yeah. even. That's yeah. right. Can you tell me a little bit about um, recognizing these opportunities or grasping the lucky moments? Um. You know, most of time you, you feel insecure. When you feel insecure, you try to plan scenarios. Okay. What if this happened? What if that happened? So I had a two personal two kids, so I was prepared for every situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what I learned was just you know I am a tough finance guy. Okay. If I visit somewhere there will be not even one penny I take everything so when I go through when I owe it you are in trouble okay. you cannot hide anything from me so uh, from this you know when you feel insecure you try to create for yourself an artificial uh, reality which you try to prepare for every situation what I learned is still there are, it doesn't matter how much data I have. And I am a data fetish guy. 
Okay. The big data and artificial intelligence help us, but it's not 100%. There will be always unpredicted events, mm. which you can see it as a threat or you can see it as an opportunity. You know, when uh, what I discovered, there was my plans and my uh, scenarios was not uh, good enough. When I start to not to plan and to be open what wants to happen at this moment mm -hmm. and that is the, the meaning of opportunity. When you are focused with your plan, there are lots of opportunity which comes on your path. Mm -hmm. You can call it as a distraction, but oh. you can define it as a new opportunity. And I have my most truthful, you know, I am proud that I have been open to these things, distractions. Some people say you are not focused, but I think I have been much more successful, also financially, okay. and uh, by being open and not being focused. And it's not, you know, it's not. It doesn't mean that don't focus, but the focus leads to blindness okay. and without focus, no results. You have to deal with both things. It's not one or the other. You got to know the strength of being focused and the weakness of yes. being focused. You have wow. to change between these two uh, extreme. And uh, I myself have gotten a lot of times in my life uh, the, the comment that I change careers too yeah. often. I've done many different uh, yep. businesses, many different branches. And <clears throat> I always, the only reason I could justify it for myself was as long as I'm learning mm -hmm. and growing, it's good enough. Yeah. I do not feel like I need to be excelling in one niche a hundred percent because yeah. I'm too young yeah. to be focusing like that. I'm still, yeah gathering skills and knowledge yeah. and experiences and that's what valuable to me and that's, yeah. that's what makes it yeah. fun yeah at the same time i also do feel like if i look around me yeah. i see people who did not live the free life like i lived it and they stuck with one trade yeah. and they either climb the corporate ladder or they grew the same business the same in the, they stay in the same business for many years yeah and sometimes i reflect and then i get insecure yeah about whether I made the right choice yeah. or not. Yeah. How do you, you're, you're almost 20 years older than me. How yeah. do you deal with this doubt that you might have at some moments? Yeah. You know, until the age of 38, I worked about 18 years for corporate. Okay. When I look at that period, I was servant of the corporate mm -hmm. and I tried to grow up on the ladder. Okay. But when I reflect on that, and I am not blaming the corporate or the system, but when I look at to my own corporate, uh, corpor uh, you know, when I look at to my uh, contribution, mm -hmm. I don't think that the world is a better place due to my contribution. And that is a sad conclusion when, uh, when I said, okay, it's very attractive. It's like a gold chain yeah. to be loved as long as, you know, I, it was not about me. Mm -hmm. My identity was the corporate. I was a corporate guy. Okay. I was welcome in the business club as long as I was working within the corporate. I had friends because I had a corporate life. Maybe I had a girlfriend or partner yeah. because the corporate and the past, the last 12 years, I coach a lot of people from corporate. And you know, after 2008, mm -hmm. I have had a lot of bankers who working in the financial system and uh, industry. And when they lose their job, the next day they lose their partner. And the, the day after they were not welcome in the business club. So they uh, lost their friend, the, they lost their friends. So uh, this, that happened to me too. Wow. And, uh, and it was a wake up call. And you know, then it's, we are, as long as, you know, 
I think for me, when I left the corporate, it was for me the fantastic time. Because in the corporate life, I have to obey the rules. Mm. I was as an innovation manager, but the innovation manager, it was it's a false statement. People want just only to know they need to have the management needs something for their Friday uh, meetings at the, you know, when they are drinking. Oh, we have a guy, we are doing this or you're doing that. It was not about innovation. I give you two examples. Once I went to the boardroom, I introduced my plan. This is at what company? Uh, forget the company because okay. it's not about the company. It's a corporate world. Okay. As an innovation manager, I had 30 minutes to present my ideas about innovation, how to, the new ideas for the industry. Cool. And the CEO asked me, Sharam, how many companies are looking to this idea? I call a few num names. Then he said, God damn, we pay you such a big money and you are coming to telling me that all these companies are working on that and you call this innovation? Go away, come back when you have a fresh ideas. Good, no. good. No. Six weeks later, I came again to report Whatever. the status of the, the same question. How many companies are working with this? I said, no one, this is just a piece of paper, no more than this, what I'm telling you. He said, oh, put it aside. When there are more people, more organization wants to work on this, you come back. <laughs> you see, this is the corporate life. The corporate life is how we maintain status quo, mm. how we maintain the rich get richer. Okay. You know, all those marketing terms, customer friendly, chief customer officer, from my opinion, is a bullshit. I was chief manipulation officer. Give me a bunch of numbers. Then I'm asking you, how do I want that I present them to you? How you want to see the curve? Framing, and that is you know, frame, frame, how you want this to, and you know, and that is my problem with independent consultant, a bullshit. The person who is paying you, he will decide what you should write. Yeah. Look at the journalist. Who is paying the journalist? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, being an independent independent provider of information or, or ideas. But the independent, what I mean, the independent is a bullshit. We are interdependent. We need each other. True. Yeah. And then in that concept, then you come to the song, me, what does mean without you? Well, let's, uh, let's call in a little break, have something to think about. Yeah. Um, if you're listening to this podcast, you do care about change. And if you care about change, you tell your friends about it. So please like, share, subscribe, and let us know in the comments what you think of this episode.